Watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. Play every game like we owe on one, like we lost it, like we got something to prove. We're looking to make a statement on Friday and get a huge rivalry win. Every team that we go against wants to beat us, no matter what. We can hang with anybody, and we're feeling feeling good about that. If anybody's looking past the Battle of Bishops, <laughs> then they're you know they're a little bit screwed up in the head because it's always a huge rivalry game. I still remember eons ago when I played. I still remember the Lures games. It's special. There's nothing we like more on the Highlight Zone than an old-fashioned rivalry renewed. That the case in the Battle of the Bishops. Hey, we got 26 local basketball games to get to tonight, so buckle up. My man Josh A. and tipping things off a jam-packed zone with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Josh. Well, Glenn, last season Bishop Dwanger bringing home a 3A regional title. This season Bishop Lures is in the hunt for the SAC crown. Coming in the Knights, one of two teams still undefeated in SAC play. So without further ado, Dwanger and Lures, it's your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Dwanger is led by one of the SAC's best big men, 6'8", Caleb Lehrman. Lures is led by the talented Truesdale twins, Draylon and Darion. And it's those twins rocking the house early on at the Lou. Draylon with a steal, Darion with a thunderous dunk. And Lures up by 10 in the early going. But the Saints eventually able to march right back thanks to Ryan Groves. The jumper and the foul, part of his 10 points, but Lures is up by eight after one. Second quarter, uh, that is Aslan Nolan with two of his team high 14. Dwanger is in front for the moment, but how about Cameron Mitchell beating the buzzer with that triple and Lures is up by four heading into halftime. However, coming into the third quarter, it's Lehrman parting the Red Seas with that layup that knocks things up at 35. But how about Danny Kelly, heads up play, the stick back, is able to give Lures a two-point lead heading into the final quarter. Now Lures eventually able to get rolling on offense. That's Kelly for three. And then how about Darion Truesdale, another pilfer, another pair. He leads the way with 15 as the Battle of the Bishops goes to Bishop Lures. Knights over Saints, 54-46. I kept moving, my teammates found me, I made sure I got the job done for them because they found me, so I made sure I scored for them because it's a big game, so we got to get it done. There's some points we're up high, some points we're down low, and we just got him out with a win, and I think it just shows how tough we are as a team and how good like we work together, and yeah. Fourth quarter, we really locked down, played good defense, made it difficult on them, and uh, you know, Gringer battled the whole time, and so uh, you know, everything that we got, we had to earn, and credit to them to do that. Next up, Dwinger hosts Blackhawk Christian on Tuesday. Lures is at Norwell that same night, and they got a big game against Wayne next Friday. Glenn, take it away. Speaking of those Wayne generals, like Lures, Anthony Brewer and the Brew Crew also coming in undefeated in SAC play. They were taken on Northrop Donald Ray Reese Jr. Drills the three early Bruins up by a one in the first, but Wayne eventually taking over Quaylen Miles. From distance, he knocks it down. Wayne now back in the lead. Then you're going to see Javon Lewis, maybe the SAC's MVP thus far this season. Hesitate? Nah, he got it. Drills the three. Wayne wins 77-54, setting up a huge game against Lures next week. By Hay Arena, Homestead at Northside. The Spartans 3-1 in conference. The Legends 2-1. Jordan King ain't nobody taking a charge on the future Purdue Boilermaker offensive lineman. And he gets the bucket in the paint. Spartans coming the other way. Joshua Rogers. This one touches almost every part of the rim and goes down. Then it's Wyatt Weaver. Dude went for a 30 piece last Friday. He gets the bucket here as Homestead wins at Baye 43 36. Let's go to Kilmer Court. Snyder hosting Concordia in front of an excited crowd. And Snyder's Jason Hart on senior night. Kid has heart. He drilled the three. That was. Perfect from straight away, and Snyder feeling pretty good. Avery Cook came up big in that come from behind win against New Haven earlier in the week. He drifts the J, but Jack Langis, bucket for the Panthers, and Josh Rykonin's team comes up victorious at Kilmer 59, 49, excuse me, to 44. Final stop in the SAC, Carroll at Southside. Chargers coming off a 20 point win over to Cal, but that was a hey, back on January 9th. Cadell Wallace. Smooth lefty stroke, he drills it, and Southside out to an early lead. J.J. Foster enjoying that. Not enjoying this so much, the Chargers in transition. 
Paxton Crane, you got to reward the big guy for, for running the court. He gets the bucket. Carroll up one. Second quarter. Watch Wallace crossing him up. Drilling the three. But it's Carroll winning this one in overtime, 74-62 at Don Riker Gymnasium. Summit City coaching legend Gary Merrill, now an assistant at Smith Academy. The Fighting 54 hosting Trinity Greenlawn from South Bend. Pick this one up in the second quarter. Malachi Ward down low. He knows what to do with it. And then you're going to see Smith again. This time it's Marshawn Starks with the two. As my basketball coach used to tell me, the box is your friend. Using the, using the backboard there, respect it. But Trinity, they can shoot the three. Nathan Palmer from distance. And Smith falls to Trinity, 70. 22. At the hangar, Adam Central coming off a dominant run to the ACAC tournament title. They were hosting Bluffton, and we pick it up with Adam Central in the first quarter. Michael McClure wants to be an eye doctor. That's why he's got great court vision. He gets the bucket. Adam Central up 6-4 in the early going. Bluffton firing away from deep. Axton Bestie nails the three, and Bluffton up by one in the first, but AC's got a lot of talent. Braylon Reber pops the three from the corner as AC wins at the hangar, 69-43 over visiting Bluffton. Heritage knocked off Woodland last week in the first round of the conference tournament. Could the Patriots do it again and do it again in Woodburn? Well, Landon Leibarger, who was huge in that upset, drills the three, and Heritage out to an early lead. Trey Yoder, though, splashing for three. You gotta love these unis. They are the Harlan. Hawks throwbacks and uh, you know kind of that old school vibe. Love it. Yoder hit the three. You'll see Torian Brown with a bucket here for Heritage, but it's Woodland with a little bit of revenge in this one. They win by one, 52-51 over the visiting Patriots. On Monday, the Fairfield boys won the NECC tournament title for the first time since 1999. Falcons looking to follow it up with a win against rival Westview. Hayden Growl with the bucket for Westview as they lead. But Fairfield, a lot of scores like to share the basketball. Derek Heinen's got this team playing well. Mitchell Miller with a little baseline jumper there. Then you're gonna see Fairfield's Noah Mass with the spin and stroke as Fairfield wins 45-38 over the Warriors. Central Noble still in the conference title race. The Cougars coming in three and one in the NECC before traveling to Butler to face Eastside. And Eastside's Nolan Baker cooking from deep. He nails the three and Eastside up in the early going. Reddick Zolman for Central Noble lays that one in. Cougars now up one, then it's Drew Pleat who has led this team in scoring the bulk of the season. He gets the bucket as Central Noble goes into Gerb Court and comes away with a win, 52-37. Angola boys fresh off a trip to the NECC tournament title game where they played Fairfield. Brendan Appleton and company hosting Busco. First quarter action, Fremont's Ethan Grimm. Oops, that's the wrong game. That is Ashton Kyler Husher with the bucket right there. Got ahead of ourselves. How about Dane Lance? Or rather, Caden Ummel with the bucket right there for Chura Busco. Then you're going to see the aforementioned Dane Lance off the pilfer and the pair. And it's Cherubusco falling to Angola, 56-45. Good matchup in the NLC. Let's talk about it. It's Warsaw and Concord. There we go. We actually have the Fairfield or the West Noble Fremont game right here. Ethan Grimm nails the three. And then you'll see more from Fremont. How about Connor Slee? Slee from distance. He's been doing it all season for the Eagles, but Wes Noble, man, they got six foot six. Braden Barth and Barth with a bucket down low. However, it's Freema with a nice victory over the reigning NECC champ. 55-54 Eagles over the Chargers. Let's go to that Warsaw game I was talking about. Big one in the NLC, Warsaw and Concord, and we pick this one up in the third. Less than 20 seconds left in that third frame. Reese Brevard with the layup. Concord up by 10. You're going to see Warsaw try to hang around. Luke Brick has been doing it all season long. He gets the bucket, but it's not enough as Concord beats Warsaw 56 to 45. 
Final stop for boys basketball. Let's head to the Buckeye State. Antwerp ranked 11th in the state in Division 4. 11 and 1 archers hosting Fairview and Carson Ultimus. We saw him on the basketball or on the football field earlier this season as the Antwerp quarterback. He gets the bucket right there. And Antwerp up by three. Then it's Ben Savina. Down low, 12-9, Antwerp in the lead. And let's go to the second quarter. It's going to be Ultimus from behind the three-point stripe. And Antwerp continues to roll this season. They are 12-1, 59-44, your final over in Ohio. Hey, that is going to do it for the fellas. But after the break, the ladies are taking center stage in the NE8. With a win tonight, Norwell could clinch at least a share of the conference title. Speaking of conference titles, a win by Snyder and the Panthers would lock up the SAC crown for the first time since 2015. Meanwhile, Fairfield Eastside and Central Noble all slugging it out for the NECC title. We got all that and more next in the zone. Highlight Zone will be back right after this. Yeah! We're in New Haven High School, home of the Bulldogs. Welcome back to the Highlight Zone. In last Friday's Game of the Week, it was Snyder showing the heart of a champion. Down eight on the road against perennial powerhouse Homestead, the Panthers fighting their way back to win, paving the road for an SAC title. A win against Concordia, and the Panthers would clinch their first SAC title in nine seasons. And this one, well, was in hand in the third quarter. Gabriella Barnes. Drilling the three right there. Then you're going to see Tia Finnessy going to play college volleyball at Mizzou in the SEC. She's an athlete, folks. The and one Snyder up by 26 in the third. Then it's Kyra Parker nailing the three. Had a couple of big buckets last week against Homestead as Snyder clinches the SAC title, beating Concordia 63-36. It means a lot, you know, this has been our goal since we first came here our freshman year. So, you know, to finally be able to do it, it really means a lot in our senior year, especially. Knowing that I have that chemistry since middle school and like coming up to high school, it's really good. So knowing that I have all of them and they, I've also played AAU with them too. So uh, that chemistry is just going to be there regardless. Homestead looking to get back on track after losses to Snyder in Warsaw. The Spartans at Northside and Carly Mollering saying, you know what? We back, baby. She drills the three from downtown. Then it's super sophomore Maya Epps with the bucket here. That is good basketball. You're going to see the legends try and ship away against Rod Parker and company. Aubrey Bleakey drains the three, but it's Homestead and Bayhay winning 75-30 over the legends. The last year's SAC champ, that would be the Northwood Bruins. They were looking for the road win against Wayne. Lexi Castator, the future Valparaiso Valparaiso Beacon drills it. She had 15. Northrop up by 20. Then it's Kayla Williams Thomas. She was the story in this game. Huge night for her. She had 38 points to pace all scorers. You'll see Sydney Gorman pop a three here for Wayne, but Northrop victorious. 83 62, your final. Bishop Lures looking for its fourth win in the last five games. The Knights hosting Bishop Dwenger. Lures only up two at the half, but uh, trying to get some distance here in the third. Annika Davis drills the three. She had 15 points. Lures now up by five. Wenger coming the other way. Taylor Asalagi for three, and it goes. Deficit now back down to two for the Saints, but Addie Shank, one of the top players in the SAC, down low. The hoop and the harm. She had a game high 21. Lures over Dwenger 57-46. Carroll coming off a four point win over Lures last Friday. The Chargers at Southside and uh, this is actually the Carroll girls game. There we go. There's the Southside Carroll girls game. Juan need a good well against Mark Redding and we pick this one up in the second quarter. It's Jaden Fuller knocking down the three and Carroll up by 18 30 to 12. A little bit more from Miss Fuller. She had herself a night, 14 points on the game for Fuller. Now a 20 point lead for the ladies in blue. Ava Myers going to get the bucket here for Carroll as the Chargers no problem against the Archers, 75-34. 5-0 in conference, a win by Norwell, and the Knights would clinch at least a share of the NE8 title. We pick this one up as Norwell taking on New Haven at Armstrong Arena, Kennedy filling. An Indiana junior all-star last season, now a senior, gets that one to go. 
and Norwell in the lead early. A little bit more from Norwell, Dakota Hubble has signed with Huntington University. She gets the bucket and Norwell jumps out to a seven zip lead. You'll see New Haven's Hannah Goodrich nail the three, but Mackenzie Feast would go over a thousand career points in this one for Norwell as Norwell clinches at least a share of the NEA title, 75 to 29. Columbia City looking pretty good so far this season. The Eagles taking on DeKalb and Tessa Tonkel with the steal to Addie Baxter, then to Faith Fry and oh, you gotta have Faith. She nails the three. Columbia City in business in the first quarter. Later, it's the Lady Barons. Ashley Cox kicking it to Abby Harris for three. But keep your eyes on this play. The Lady Eagles, Tessa Tonkel, Coming up with the steal and watch Tonkel go all Magic Johnson behind the back. You kidding me? Columbia City victorious against DeKalb. The final 69 to 19. At the TP, Huntington North and Belmont. The Braves led by Haley Cole, who signed to play at Trine on Tuesday. Belmont's Gwen Laurent nails the three right there. She had nine on the game and Belmont up in the fourth, 25 22. This one was a low score. Later, Huntington North's Marissa Trout. She led everybody with 13 points. Belmont, though, still up by one. You'll see Lauren do it again as Belmont escapes against Huntington North with a victory. It's the Braves 35, the Vikings 28. Now let's go to the big blue pit in Kendallville. East Noble squaring off with Leo. Third quarter action, East Noble on the run. This is Avery Amstutz. They don't stop ball, and she gets the layup right there. East Noble now up 22-21. Fast forward to the fourth quarter. It's Leo knocking down the three. Leo now back in the lead by 129-28. Addison Deming with the bucket here, and East Noble goes on to win by 133-32, the final at the pit. In the NECC, Eastside won the girls' tournament title on Monday for the first time in 30 years. The Blazers hosting Central Noble, and it's Melissa McCoy. She is the real McCoy. She drills the three Central Noble up by three early. Second quarter action, Lily Kreischer. That is a long two, but Eastside feeling good. Mike Lordy's squad taking over here in the third. J.C. Kitchen with the three as Eastside continues to roll 49 41. Rating 3A state champ Fairfield hosting Westview and in the third quarter we got ourselves a ball game Fairfield. Macy Worthman with a bucket right there and this one well Fairfield feeling pretty good when they are at home. How about Eva Herbert splashing the three for Kyle Hartman's team and Fairfield we're now with a double digit lead. Janessa Lehman gets the bucket here for Westview but Fairfield goes on to win 51-35 over the visiting Warriors. They clinch at least a share of the conference title. Hey, a last stop for girls hoops. We're in Steuben County for Angola and Churubusco. Third quarter, Angola's Lexi Stillman going for the two, and it's good. Busco, however, trying to counter Patty Wiggs with the layup right there. However, it was Angola's night. Final seconds of the third quarter. You're going to see Kylie Caswell eventually beat the buzzer here as Angola wins 58-39. Stay tuned, your gem of the night is up next. We are the Eastside Blazers, you are watching the Highlight Zone. Don't go anywhere. We're the Arab Archers. And number 21, Fred, is him. And you're watching the Highlight Zone. Hey, last Friday night, Jordan Poole was too cool for school. The Snyder senior leading the Panthers from down eight in the fourth quarter, rallying them to beat Homestead by eight. It earned the Purdue recruit the Highlight Zone's highest honor. As for this week, here is your latest gem of the night brought to you by Peter Franklin Jewelers. Now, we had a Truesdale jam, but, I mean, you don't see this every day. Tessa Tonkel for the Lady Eagles of Columbia City going behind the back and finding Molly Baker for the layup. This Columbia City team is going to be a problem when the postseason rolls around. Columbia City's Tessa Tonkel hook it up with Molly Baker. That is this week's Gem of the Night brought to you by Peter Franklin Jewelers. 
Hey, a Big Ten Friday night hoops. IU on the road against number 11, Wisconsin. Of course, uh, former Highlight Zone star and Central Noble grad, Connor Asijan. A sophomore for the Badgers, uh, Kalel Ware did not play for IU in this one. First half, Asijan. Oh, how many times do we see him do that up for Central Noble? He knocks it down. IU trailed 39-26 at the half. Second half, Hayton Sparks, the Winchester native with the steal and the slam. That would cap off a 9-0 run for the Hoosiers, but it would not be enough for the fellas in candy stripes as Wisconsin wins. Man, IU, it's tough at the Kohl Center. 91-79, your final up in Madison. Hey, finally, we're talking Comets Hockey, the case first game after the All-Star break. First, a three straight against the Worcester Railers. And we pick it up in the first period. Alexi Daou with his 13th of the season. You see him clean it up right there in front of the goal. And that makes it one zip Comets. That would be the score after the first period. Second period, no goals. Comets lay it on thick in the third. They score three in the final frame as the Comets win by a final of 4 nothing. These two going to play again tomorrow night in the jungle. Puck dropping at 7.30. And then they'll play for a third time in three days, 5 o'clock on Sunday. Be there or be square. Well, that is going to do it for this week's edition of the Highlight Zone. For Josh, I'm Glenn. We'll be back next Friday night. It'll be the final day of doubleheaders here on the Highlight Zone as girls basketball postseason is around the corner. Uh, for Josh, I'm Glenn, and we'll see you then.